Okay. okay. Hello and welcome to the first semi-final of this crazy, crazy tournament that we are having. I just before I uh, started, I was like finalizing the deck and I saw the lineup. I legit told to myself that this is probably uh, the best quizzing lineup I have hosted in a long, long, long time. I think the last time would have been the All-Star Finale. Because there is no way you can predict who the two people would be who would reach the finals. Uh, I am so excited to host this quiz. This is proper like a like a all star, like a like a goat or like a like a goat tournament or like a, I don't know what to say. This is just I'm so excited to host this panel. Uh, if you have been following this tournament, you know the format so far. We started with sixteen contestants, uh, eight from quizzing with the comedians, four from the quiz show, and four from the uh, quizzing with members series that we do. And now we have eight people in the semi-final. We have the first semi-final now uh, with four of them. Uh, two of them are from uh, the quiz show uh, category or route or whatever you call it. One from quizzing with members and one from quizzing with the comedians. Uh, I'm going to call them one by one. I'm so excited. To, this is just, you know, I see these Instagram reels of this, these uh, the, keep coming on my store pages, which are something like... Uh, Holland team of this World Cup or like the Germany team of 1990 World Cup and like, you know, like Real Madrid. Of this. So, and they keep zooming in into every face. You know, you have like Roberto Carlos and Beckham and like, uh, you know, the, the Galactico, Zidane and Raul. I am feeling like that, calling them one by one. I'm so excited. Uh, but let's begin. Uh, let's begin. Our first contestant here has won many quizzing editions in the past. Also won the first quarter final ahead of uh, Vishal Dayama. Sanveer and Rohan, the other Rohan, uh, give it up for Ashish Shakya. Hello. Hello. Yeah. First Hello. time against uh, three people uh, who you're quizzing. Who are not, first who are not comics. I'm first time yeah. First time I've quizzed against everyone. You know, that's true. But you've seen them on the... I have seen them. I, you know, I follow your uh, all the videos that are coming out. So I watch this regularly. And uh, so I'm very aware that uh, it's very tough. It's very tough. And now that's... I'm suddenly regretting doing it at the end of a work day. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. We'll see. We'll see. Uh -huh. We'll see. Okay. Our second question <laughs> is uh, from the Delhi uh, quiz show that we you've all seen in, in the quiz shows that we have had in the last few Sundays, in the last few weeks. Um, here from the fourth quarter final, where he came second ahead of Abhirupa and Neville. Uh, give it up for Devji. Oh, Welcome, Devjit. Excited? Excited for yeah, I mean, the final? Tough room to be in. <laughs> I feel like those Indian Idol judges that legit, it's all about the the order and the set and everything because lit, like this can be a finale. This is this is not a semi-final. Uh, <laughs> okay, our third contestant is also from the quiz show, uh, from the Mumbai segment of the quiz show. Uh, one his quarterfinal three Ahead of uh, uh, Kenny Sebastian, uh, Ridima, and Tanangil. Uh, give it up for Gaurav. Hi, hello. Hey, Gaurav. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Really excited. Oh, shit, you, you beat Kalan. God um, damn. I think three points on the last question. God damn. Oh, <laughs> Kanan would have hated that. I know how much <laughs> Kanan would have hated that. <laughs> I'm fully aware. Oh, tough, 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 tough. Fun. Full luck on on that note, uh, from our Quizzing with Members category, in fact, the only uh, Quizzing with Members semi-finalist uh, won his, oh no, actually came second in his second quarter final that we had earlier, but ahead of Pratika Panigrahi and Anirban Dasgupta. Give it up for Pawan. Hi, KV. Promoting Hi, his uh, brand Levi, and I'm promoting my brand Quizzing. Come on, Pawan, well done. I'm promoting little known team that needs a lot of promotion. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. We can start. Let's begin. First question to Ashish. Looking at a one word answer, a question. X comes from a Hindi and Telugu word meaning day laborer, which is associated with a Urdu word meaning slave. The word X was first used in the 16th century by European traders across Asia. By the 18th century, the term referred to migrant Indian indentured laborers. In the 19th century, the term was adopted for the transportation and employment of Asian laborers via employment contracts on sugar plantations formerly worked by enslaved Africans. The Chinese word X literally translates to bitter strength, 
but is more commonly understood as hard labor. Last clue, the phrase brown X is a term used for an Indian citizen who is posturing as a representative to a foreign institute, like represent, representative of India or Indian culture to a foreign institute. Basis, these four sets of clues. Give me a one word answer. Brown Monday. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, there's a lot of data here. Uh, so the, the word is the same in Chinese. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what, but okay, what language, though? is it a, it's a Chinese word you're saying? No, 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 no. That is just okay. one extra hint. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I mean, Chinese what? should not be your focus to connect. Sure. But what language is this word? We don't know yet. Oh, no, it's... it comes from Telugu and uh, Hindi. The roots are and Telugu. The roots are Telugu. So it's not an English word, but it's an English language word. What are we looking at? Like, or is that, you can't tell that. Uh, used in English. Used in all the senses, the sense in English. Oh, okay. So it's an English language. Okay. But the etymological roots lie in Hindi, Telugu, Urdu combined. Telugu word meaning day laborer, which is associated with Urdu word meaning slave. So, sorry, the, I'm confused with the wording. Day laborer and is associated with slave. Ah, so, okay. The Hindi and Telugu origin of the word would, hmm. would imply day laborer. Okay. While the Urdu origin of the same word would imply slave. Got it. The word is the same. Got it. Got it. Got it. And the root words are also the same. I'm going to go wild fucking guess because I'm not getting it. Is it Gollum? Not Gollum? Going to Devji? I uh, don't have a proper guess but uh, I mean, Gollum would have been mine as well but uh, I'm thinking, is this Desi? Not Desi going to Gaurav? Uh, at least I'm at least I'm not the only one who has no clue what's happening. Uh I say brown sepoy. Not sepoy going to Pavan. It's coolie. It's coolie. 13 points there to Pavan. It is coolie. Ah, yes, that makes okay. sense. Nice. Yes. Nice. Very coolie. Nice. Coolie comes from Hindi slash Telugu word coolie. Urdu also has a word called coolie. And then everything fits. Uh, even Chinese Mandarin has a word called kuli, which literally means bitter strength. Uh, Term used for everything in the second para, Indian endangered la laborers, etc. And brown kuli is a pejorative term, so to speak, for people who sort of claim represent, representing India. And all that. Okay, kuli. 13 points there to Pavan. And I come back to Ashish for the next direct. Actually, very direct funda question. Just tell me the context of this post by Disney. Okay. Have a look at the picture. Why has Disney posted this? Do we need a timeline or like, I mean, just can you give a timeline? Like, was this very recent, very long ago? Uh, if all four of you want a timeline hint, I can, I can give you. If you, uh, even one yeah, of you... Yeah, yeah. If you don't want, that's fine. Like, that's yeah, fine. If one of you, even if one of you want, like, it's blocking. I'll take the first round without any timeline. Anybody wants to block? Uh, they yeah. don't feel uh, this thing. Yeah. Confident. Ah, kalle, kalle, block, kalle, ah, block. Yeah, yeah. Chalo blocking. I'll take no timeline. Okay. Okay, then give me a second. Is this about um, uh, Hamilton going to Ferrari? Beautifully done. It is. It is 10 points there to Ashish. This is, of course, <coughs> now... Because the, the black ones of Ferrari, I, the red, I couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, red is also looking like a Ferrari, but it's also looking like a Porsche. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, of course, current affair in terms of timelines. Uh, Hamilton joining Ferrari, of course, we've been following F1. Hamilton recently announced that he will be quitting Mercedes and joining Ferrari. 10 points there to Ashish and I come to Devjit for the next direct. Devjit, this injury, also known as Hutchinson fracture, was first identified in the late 19th century among professionals who encountered it while performing a specific task related to their job. The mechanism of injury was linked to an unconventional practice during that era when while hand cranking to start a certain machinery, 
an unexpected incident occurred. This sudden jerk could hyperextend the wrist, causing the fracture name. Although the naming may seem disconnected from its origin today, these fractures are more commonly associated with different causes like falling on outstretched arms. What is the specific fracture called that shares its name with the professionals who once faced this injury during their job tasks? I'll guess something called the uh, railway fracture. Not the railway fracture going to Gaurav. Um, I don't know. The housemaid's wrist. Not the housemaid's wrist or fracture going to Pavan. Is it the chauffeur's fracture? Beautifully done. 12 points there to Pavan. Uh, it is the chauffeur's uh, fracture. This is hand cranking is something that drivers would do in the past. Uh, as you can see in the image, this is what they used to do and this, this used to be the source of their injury and still named after them. Chauffeur's fracture. Nice. 12 point there to Pavan and I come back to Ashish for the next direct. Ashish, a brand question with three hints. First hint, a peak in the Manmad Hills has become known as the X Mountain because it is shaped like the X logo. First hint. Second hint, X appears throughout Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses. Third clue, Ramesh Chauhan had developed the formula for X from scratch, experimenting with ingredients such as cinnamon, cardamom and nutmeg. Last clue, its slogan until the early 1980s was Happy Days Are Here Again. Okay, so combining all these four clues, I'm looking at a brand name as your answer. The brand still exists, right? It's not like a dead brand. Yes. Brand still exists. Man, the slogan is really throwing me off because all the products I can think of would not go with that slogan. The early 1980s was happy days are here again. Mm. That's an Indian brand, right? Yeah. I don't know. I was going to say Vix, the triangular. Mm -hmm. Thing, but no, it's not that. Uh, no, I pass it. Yeah, going to, not Vix going to Debjit. Is this uh, Old Monk? Not Old Monk? Okay. Oh, old, old Monk has uh, hints of vanilla, my friend. <laughs> vanilla. I don't know if they actually put it in, but the uh, after uh, tasting no. notes of Old Monk are van vanilla and duk. <laughs> not, not Old Monk going to Gora. Oof. Um... I'm going to go very close to Old Monk. I'm going to say thumbs up. Yes. Well, ah. there to Gaurav. It is thumbs up. Gaurav also on board now. The Manmad Hills. Yeah. Thumbs up. Ramesh Chauhan. Happy days are here again. Thumbs up. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. Manmad wow. Hills. Yeah. This is in Maharashtra. Actually, quite close to Nashik. If if you're ah. around Nashik, you can go and have Dude. a and you know what happens sometimes when a cloud comes over that thumb, it looks very awkward. Like it. <laughs> okay, 12 points there to Gaurav, which means the next direct will be to Pavan. Pavan, this is for you. In a contemporary reimagining of a popular dystopian classic, a critically acclaimed novelist, Sandra Newman, offers a fresh perspective on the character Julia from an iconic work. This imaginative retelling delves into Julia's experience from her own point of view, shedding new light on her relationship with Winston Smith and giving voice to previously voiceless female characters in literature. Question for you is very direct. Julia is a retelling of which famous novel? 1984. 1984, yes. 10 points there to Pavan. It is 1984, Winston Smith, Julia, etc. And this is the book, a retelling of George Orwell's 1984, Julia by Sandra Newman. Okay. 10 points to Pavan and I come back to Ashish for the next direct. One of those rare short questions. While the white chapel murderer and leather apron are used at times, what is the most commonly used term for the same? Okay. Talking about something... White Chapel murderer and leather apron. This is uh, Jack yeah. the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, yes. Back to back tense. 
Uh, Ashish gets 10 for this. Whitechapel, big clue because Whitechapel was the area yeah, where Jack the Ripper was active back in the day. Jack the Ripper. Okay. 10 points there to Ashish, which means I come to Devjit now. Devjit X is a 1991 American psychological horror thriller film directed by Jonathan Dean and written by Ted Talley, adapted from Thomas Harris's 1988 novel of the same name. It is regularly cited by critics, film directors and audiences as one of the greatest and most influential films. The term X, like the same as the movie name, has its origin in a biblical verse. I had been gentle, I had been like a gentle dash led to the slaughter. I did not realize that they had plotted against me, saying, let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. Just tell me what movie are we talking about? Uh, this is The Silence of the Lambs. Yes, 10 points there to Devji. Now, everybody is on scoreboard. Uh, everybody has points now. This is, I had been like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. Uh, we are talking about Silence of the Lambs. The Silence of the Lambs. Okay. Cool. Okay, first run scored. Everybody is feeling good now. Uh, Devji has 10, which means the next direct will now be Gaurav. Gaurav, in a unique culinary event hosted by former White House chef Sam Cass, a new concept was brought to life, not as a feast of obscure foods, but as a warning about the potential impact of climate change on our daily wow. meals. The dinner featured dishes like Norwegian salmon, oysters, lamb, finger-linked potatoes, etc. These seemingly ordinary items are at risk of drastic change or disappearance due to climate warming. The dinner aims not only to raise awareness about the immediate threats to our food supply, but also to inspire action. What thought-provoking three-word title was given to this event, which also alludes to a very famous reference, so it comes from somewhere, symbolizing the potential loss of cherished foods and the need for climate-conscious choices in our daily lives. Also, just to clarify to all four of you, this three-word title that I'm talking about also includes the article. So if it's like A and the, you know, it is included in the three-word that we are talking about. Um, okay, no, too much of a guest. I'll say a movable feast. Not a movable feast. Going to Pavan. Can't think of anything. I'll pass. Okay, passing to Ashish. Is it the Last Supper? The Last Supper. 12 points yeah. there to Ashish. This can be your Last Supper. Ashish gets 12 for this. And now everything fits. Three word title, of course, The Last Supper. Alluding to a famous biblical reference and art reference. And of course, now this Last Supper. So please enjoy all the food and everything. Thought provoking. The Last Supper. Okay, These are some of the yeah. items that they served. Okay. The Last Supper. 12 points there to Ashish. And I come back to Devjit. They did order it. This ailment initiates its progression within the reproductive system, specifically in the connection between the uterus and the vagina. Its gradual development involves dysplasia, marking abnormal cellular changes. During the budget speech, the Finance Minister of India emphasized plans to encourage vaccination for girls aged, aged 9 to 14. This ailment has a significant prevalence in India ranking as the second most common health issue among women. Human papillomavirus is a primary contributor to its onset, with a high prevalence due to limited awareness and restricted access to vaccination programs. Despite state efforts for vaccination, screening rates in rural areas remain disconcertingly low, leading to late-stage diagnosis. What is the name of this health condition? that demands urgent attention and concerted efforts for prevention. Um, the uterine cancer? Uh, no, I'll pass to Gaurav. HIV? Not HIV, passing to Pavan. I not think of anything. I'll just take a random guess. Shingles. No, passing to Ashish. Cervical cancer? Yes. 13 points there to Ashish. We're talking about cervical and if you see Sorry, but it's the first time I've heard somebody respond to cervical cancer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. 
Sorry, it's you and Poonam Pandey. Only, only the other one person. <laughs> exactly. Who's, uh, yeah. had... I knew I put this question because of Poonam Pandey. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at the way it said human papilloma virus, which is essentially HPV. Okay, and HPV was in news recently, as we know, in uh, in relation to cervical cancer. Which is cervical cancer. 13 points there to Ashish. And I come to Devjit for the next thread. Devjit, in the transformation of this actor into an iconic character, the makeup artist John Caglioni Jr. faced a significant challenge. The actor's portrayal required meticulous attention to detail, especially in choosing the right lipstick. Interestingly, the actor personally selected the lipstick for the portrayal, opting for Maybelline 49 Rouge Passion Red. This specific shade played a crucial role in bringing the larger-than-life character into a more realistic world. Caglioni Jr. had to balance the untidy and messy appearance of the character without making them unrecognizable. The distinct features of the character, including, include, including red lips, allowed for some creative freedom. The actor's long, greasy hair and the uneven, messy green dye job contributed to the character's identity. This makeup transformation became a gamble that paid off, ensuring the unmistakable presence of which character. So you need to tell me the character and the movie as well. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think I was on mute. Yeah. Um, so is this uh, Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight? Yes. Perfect. 10 points there to Devjit. It is Joker, Dark Knight. Now everything fits. Lipstick. Red lips, greasy hair, uneven, messy, green dye. This is Joker from the Dark Knight. On the right without makeup, on the left with, with makeup. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first half. As expected, cracker of a quiz so far. Uh, let's take a quick, quick score check. Ashish on the back of 10 for Hamilton joining Ferrari. 10 for Jack the Ripper. 12 for The Last Supper. And 13 for Cervical Cancer is leading right now with 45. Devjit with 10 each for Joker, Dark Knight, Funda and Silence of the Lambs uh, is on 20. Gaurav has 12 for Thumbs Up. Pavan with 13 on Chauffeur's, uh, sorry, 13 for Cooley, 12 for Chauffeur's Fracture and 10 for 1984 is on 35. Okay, as expected, very close quiz because one one question separates all of you. Ashish on 45, Pavan on 35, Devjit on 20, Gaurav on 12. And whole second half remains. The order now will be Pavan, Gaurav, Devjit, Ashish. Okay. Starting with Pavan. Pavan X is an antagonist in the DC comics who primarily is an enemy of both Green Arrow and Batman. He's a serial killer who only targets non-powered vigilantes. Now try to guess his name from the comic panel shown. Okay. So in the panel, if you can't see... Yeah, you can see. So look closely and there are hints for what the character is called. Nice segue from Joker to Batman. Just a little bit appreciation. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah, I don't have a guess. So I'll just say new skiller. Uh, no, passing to Gaurav. I'm just thinking, um, I can't think of the right... Um, is for this but is he like um he's like the, uh oh my god the silhouette basically or something like that uh no no passing to devjit who i think is patiently waiting for his turn yes i think so i'm not sure but um is this bullseye ah uh, no no okay no going to ashish shit i was gonna say bullseye because <laughs> <laughs> i was uh then I remembered oh, Marvel may be a bullseye. Ya, um, okay, if it's not bullseye, then my other guess is very dumb. But let me look at this thing again. I'm just going to say thumb, the thumb, because this not face the, looks like a thumb. <laughs> not the thumb, you already have one. Thumb yeah, you already had a thumb. Quiz. You know? <laughs> okay, we'll start again with Pavan, make it a five point question. Okay. So the reason the name is very interesting, uh, because the name is derived from what this guy does and more specifically what this guy speaks. So this villain essentially imitates the noises which are around him. So if you see all his dialogues 
are basically drip, blah, no, punt, and all that. So, should I stop now? Does anybody have a guess? Oh. Okay, no, that makes sense. Good. Is his name Echo? Not Echo, going to Gaurav. Um, copycat? Not copycat, going to Devji. Is this onomatopoeia? Yes. Seven points oh. to Devji. Very nice, very nice. The uh, villain is called onomatopoeia. Because this is what he does. He basically all the words he uses yeah. are words like these. Okay? Great hint also. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. So as in case any audience member didn't know, onamotopia is words like these, which basically words that sound like what the meaning of the word is. So boom, pop, flat, crack. And if you ever read this guy's comics, this is what he does. And all his dialogues are this drip plan. Etc. Etc. So nicely done. Seven points there to Devji. Next direct will be to Ashish. Okay, Ashish. X was the title of various elected officials in ancient Rome. The two most important were of the plebs and the military. For most of Roman history, a college of ten exes of the plebs acted as a check on the authority of the Senate and the annual magistrates, holding the power to intervene on behalf of the plebeians and veto unfavorable legislation. Military X commanded portions of the Roman army. One completely different clue is X is also something founded by Sardar Dayal Singh Majithia in Lahore in 1881. One word answer, what are we looking for? I have forgotten this. I knew this exact funda and I have forgotten. So now wait. So it's a title, but it's also something founded by this person. Hmm. I'll pass, dude. It's not coming to me. I know this, but I need it. I'll pass. Okay, Ashish passes. We go to Pavan. Tribune. Tribune. 11 points uh, there. Pavan, it is Tribune. Correct. So, yeah. Tribune comes from Tribus, tribe, and Tribune, head of a tribe originally, and then the format of the Tribune is a newspaper founded in Punjab. Correct. correct still correct. active. Tribune. Okay. Tribune. 11 points there to Pavan. Next direct will be to Gaurav. Gaurav, the Marina Bay street circuit is a F1 street circuit in Singapore. Turn 10 of the circuit used to be a quick sequence of left, right and left corners, which used to be pretty challenging for drivers. The turn was removed and replaced with a simple left turn after 2012 due to safety concerns. What was the original term known as popularly, which is also the name of a cocktail associated with Singapore? Uh, Singapore Sling. Singapore Sling. 10 points there to power. It is Singapore Sling is what the term was called. And probably the most famous cocktail associated with Singapore. Singapore Sling. Okay. Which means the next direct will be to Devji. Devji, the nestled in Milan, the Piazzale Loreto McDonald's conceals a dark secret beneath its everyday facade. Unbeknownst to its patrons, this fast food joint occupies the spot where a crumbling legacy faced a tragic demise. The exact location, which is now, as you can see in the image, a bustling McDonald's at Corso Buenos Aires 17, hides a grim chapter of history beneath its golden arches. Tell me, what is the claim to fame of this fast food joint? What are we talking about? So I'll just say... Uh... That it hides the so there are like catacombs beneath this McDonald's that you can see through the floor. Ah uh, no no not that funda going to Ashish. I have two options. Mm, 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 mm. McVeggie or Mc... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with cheese without cheese. Not available also in Milan. Yeah, yeah right. to... it's a, it's called McVeggie. <laughs> No, make a little tiki available in this McDonald's. Make a little crumbling legacy faced a tragic demise. Okay, I'm gonna go with the. Um, is this where Caesar was uh, killed? Uh, no, going to Pavan. Other one then, maybe. Is this the spot where the Roman Empire ended 
Uh, no, no. Going to Gaurav. Honestly, I also thought it was like a, a catacombs or something like that in this like glass. Um, I'll go with a crumbling legacy. Um, I don't know, like who whoever's the villain uh, of of Assassin's Creed Two, Cesare Borgia was killed here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll start again with Devjit. Uh, okay, all of you are on right track, and uh, but. Uh, the hint that I'll add is the think of an individual. That is a hint. Your answer will have an individual's name. Is that good enough? Should we take a round with that? Yes. We'll add more. Anybody wants to block at this point? I'll block. Even though I don't know if my thing is correct, but I'll block. No, no. So think you're all on like, yeah, I mean, but your answer will be an individual. Okay. Just to clarify. Actually, there is a audience. Uh, no, I'm not adding, just clarifying a few things, basically your guesses in the first round, is uh, don't think underneath too literally. So don't think as a coach. Underneath here is metaphorical, but the spot is important. The spot, the point that marks, like this place in general, is very important. And like Ashish was focusing on a certain part uh, in the middle, uh, which is also a part I'll request you guys to focus, is occupies a spot where a crumbling legacy faced a tragic demise. And think of an individual. We'll start ah, I'm unblocked. You can give the original hint of time to give. Yeah, tha, na? No, no, I think I think ah, we can okay, okay, around okay. The basis expressions. I think a round to get. Um is this where Penito Mussolini was executed? I'll give it to you. I was I was actually only waiting for Mussolini. Oh, okay. uh, said no one ever. Uh, but I was uh, <laughs> this is the this is the spot. Hitler said it a lot actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the story from 1945 where the famous mutilation, as they say, of Mussolini and uh, his, I have actually have an image in the There's article. a Huh. Yeah. Oh, lamp post bhi tha na, ah, lamp post yeah, there used there. to be, I think, an SO petrol pump, gas station, whatever you call it. And now there's a McDonald's right here. So people go at this McDonald's, take photos, because it's exactly where Mussolini and the crumbling legacy was fascism faced a tragic, tragic demise. Okay. How many points is that? How uh, many points is that? Five to Devjit. And I come to Ashish for the next direct. Ashish, amidst his bustling schedule of creating documentaries, producing films for others, and upholding the legacy of Hollywood, this individual has surprisingly embraced social media, particularly TikTok, under the influence of his daughter, Francesca. While navigating through TikTok trends, guessing the purpose... So th these are some of the things that he does. While navigating through TikTok trends, guessing the purpose of various items, and even attempting to grasp Gen Z slangs, he showcases a side rarely seen by his audience. This unexpected venture into social media stardom culminated in a Super Bowl ad, uh, Super Bowl ad collaboration with Squarespace, showcasing the charming bond between father and daughter. Who is this legendary figure of cinema who continues to surprise and delight audiences both on and off the screen? This is Scorsese, no? This is Scorsese, yes. 10 points there to Ashish. Um, yeah, now, I'm, I mean, keeps popping up in my store pages. Uh, basically, he started, like getting, he started getting cranky yeah. about the Marvel thing and then people are like, yeah. 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 Especially the one where he picks his favorite movies and also people are depicting <laughs> But how can you pick Alien over this and all? Anyway, this is Martin Scorsese, of course. 10 points there to Ashish. And I come to Pavan. Okay, Pavan, this after the Second World War, leaders Stalin and Churchill met secretly to decide who gets what land after the war. Stalin wanted more land because he helped defeat Hitler. I'm sorry. Churchill didn't like this, but he had to agree. They, they call this secret deal the percentages agreement. Because if you can see in the document on the right, it's Russia 90%. Yugoslavia 50-50, Hungary 50-50, and so on and so forth. Churchill jokingly gave this percentage, percentage agreement another name and said his American allies would be shocked if they saw how crudely he had put it. What funny name, or what name, funny is subjective, okay. What name did Churchill give to the secret agreement, okay? And the secret agreement is on the screen. 
Essentially, percentages agreement, also known as something else, which was coined by Churchill for what document he and Stalin okay, created. Just to just yeah. before, like I guess Pawan takes a, anyone takes a guess. Um, he came up like the the funny name is something he coined. You're saying it is not like a like the the earlier answer about Last Supper, where it's a famous thing already that he just coined called it again. Uh, no, so not like Last Supper, where it was already a big reference, say Magna Carta. For example, hmm. and he started calling it Bangladesh, nothing like that. But he didn't coin the word and all, just to clarify. It is yeah. a. Huh, okay. I can't think of anything that might be funny in this context. For yeah, that's why I said don't, think, don't focus on funny. <laughs> Maybe Churchill found it funny. Uh, and in the larger context, it might be just ironically funny because you're just sitting and dividing lands. Uh, Whiskey fueled Kremlin night. What a fun drinking game. Yeah. 100% you were drunk. Or 70 30, like whatever. Mm -hmm. I said 100% or the kind of thing they were doing, they'll be like 30% drunk. Yeah, I am. 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 I <laughs> I don't know. Dismemberment agreement. Oh, nice. Not the dismemberment agreement. Going to Gaurav. I have like a, a funda. I don't know what it is. It's, it's like a restaurant bill. Uh, no, no. Going to Devjit. Hmm. Is this like the European pie Agreement. Uh, no, going to Ashish. I'm just trying to think of stuff that is offensive to Americans and I don't have anything before the year 2001. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to... Um, uh, something to do with red, the word red, I don't know. No, no. Okay, we'll take one more round starting with power. So obviously, all the answers that you guys gave are way better and more creative than this. So just I just want to bring the house to as basic this thing. Okay. Now we'll start with the hint. So the answer is the dash document. Okay. So he called it the dash document. Now we just need to fill that dash. That dash is an adjective. Okay. So the dash document, dash is an adjective. Very common adjective, number one. Number two, now the reason he said it and he called it dash is because... So just... To visualize, imagine US is the teacher, okay, and US left the room asking two students to work on something, okay, mm. came back and the students have done such a crude work, for example, okay, like very shoddy, or what is what is the adjective that might that you might use for such students or kids? This adjective is mostly used. Mostly, in general, used for kids and students, etc., etc., who don't listen to the teacher, disobey the teacher, and very normal word. Okay, we'll take around with that. Do you guys think? Okay. Is it the naughty document? It is the naughty document. Yes, five points there to Pawan. It is the naughty document. Churchill wow. called it. The people not got shocked at really mild stuff back in the previous <laughs> week. <laughs> the naughty <laughs> document. Okay, the naughty document was actually out in uh, for a display a few years back. I don't know if it still is, but if you are in London, they it was out for like British archives, and you could go and actually see the naughty document. Uh, okay, that's hilarious. The naughty document. Five points there to Pawan, and I come back to Gaurav. Gaurav, one word answer. The term X appears in English in 1497 and originally meant the East or Mediterranean lands east of Italy. It is borrowed from the French word meaning rising, referring to the rising of the sun in the East. Its overwhelming characteristic is that it represents the land bridge between Africa and Eurasia. In the 13th and 14th centuries, the term was used for Italian maritime commerce in the Eastern Mediterranean, including Greece, Anatolia, Syria, Palestine, and Egypt. That is the lands east of Venice. Just tell me what one word are we looking for here? What one word are we talking about? The Levant. The Levant, yes. 10.3 ah. to Gaurav. 
nicely cracked it is nice on demand okay nice 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 yeah comes from a french word for anyway, it's a little bit like levant <laughs> like that yeah levant it is this is uh, the region as you can see in the image okay uh, gorav gets 10 for this which means the next direct will be devjit devjit is a logo question originating from an imaginative moment this automotive symbol so automotive symbol or automotive logo let's make it very clear traces its roots back to a french hotel where one of its co-founders william c durand found inspiration in a pattern on wallpaper however the story takes a twist when durand's widow mentioned a different setting altogether a holiday in hot springs virginia the motif resembling a slanted bow tie possibly borrowed from an advertisement by the southern compressed coal company found its place in history as the emblem for a pioneering automobile brand born from the creative minds behind a company founded in 1911 this symbol has evolved over the years transitioning from a blue design to the iconic gold emblem seen on cars and trucks worldwide just tell me what iconic logo are we talking about the chevrolet logo the chevrolet logo yes 10 points there uh to devji now everything fits american um slanted bow tie mm. and yeah golden that's a big clue so yep. used to be blue back in the day then now is the iconic golden logo that we see all over the world 10 points there to devjit and i come to ashish ashish mv equal to pq is one of the most famous equations in economics Okay, and there's a car as well, which essentially leads us to the question: Which economist ranked as the second most popular economist of the 20th century, following only Keynes? Used this as his number plate. Oh, see, this is the economist here, na? Trying to guess era from car, <laughs> then then realize I don't know which economist was in which era. That is not helpful. I'll go with Amartya Sen. You're going with Amartya Sen? Yeah. Uh, no, passing to Pavan. Is it Milton Friedman? It is. Eleven points there, ah. Pavan. It is Milton Friedman. Ah, okay. M V equal to P Q. As you know, money and like velocity of money, etc. Basically, free market and how Friedman basically in the seventies said that we need to move from Keynesism to monetarism. That was the whole funda of Milton Friedman. Eleven points there to Pavan, and I come to Gaurav for the next direct. Gaurav, Lana Del Rey recently announced her upcoming album, which takes a surprising turn towards the country genre. Collaborating with acclaimed producer Jack Antonoff, Lana shared her excitement about their creative journey across various southern U.S. locations, including Muscle Shoals, Nashville, and Mississippi. Antonoff, who is a Grammy-winning artist known for his work with uh, Taylor Swift and Lord. have been uh, has been a consistent creative force for lana since their serendipitous pitches meeting in 2018 now the big clue what common term associated with cowboys and a comic book character's iconic weapon is also the title of lana del rey's upcoming album so looking at a one word answer which is lana del rey's next album associated with cowboys and a comic book character's iconic weapon um i mean there's so many things i can think of with cowboys uh assuming it's not a cigarette um is it a lasso yes that is correct 10 points there to gorav uh now everything fits this is her next album and wonder woman is the character we are talking about her iconic weapon <laughs> crazy quiz as expected comes to an end and like i said in the beginning no matter what the score all four of you are just fantastic oh so crazy good. crazy 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 like oh my god this gora like the levant and like friedman and chevrolet and anomot these won't be answered in a normal quiz okay but you guys are just fantastic uh, but we'll take a look at the score ashish had 45 in the first half ashish got 10 in the second half on martin score cc and ashish ends on 55 Okay, Devjit had twenty in the first half. Got seven for Onamotopia, 
five for death of Mussolini and ten for uh, Chevrolet ends on the greatest number in the world of numbers, forty-two. Nice. Forty-two for Devjit. Gaurav had twelve in the first half. Got hat tricks of ten in the second half. Uh, ten each for uh, uh, Lasso, Lasso, uh, Levant, Levant, and Singapore Sling. Gaurav also ends on the answer to life, universe, and everything. Forty-two. Okay, now we come to Pawan. Pawan had thirty-five in the first half. Eleven for Tribune. Five for the naughty document, and eleven for Milton Friedman. Friedman. Uh, Pavan ends on 62. Okay, so everybody is a winner because two people who did not qualify got 42 as their answer. So you're a winner in uh, in your own right. But the two people who qualify from this, uh, the first runner-up is Ashish. Ashish, congratulations. I'll see you in the finale. Yes. And uh, Pavan uh, dominated this quiz. Consistent performer in the first half and second half, 35 plus 27. Uh, Pavan, congratulations. You're actually the winner yes. of this semi-final. Thank you. And Devjit Gaurav, of course, well played, fantastic stuff. One question here and there, and you never know. 42, 42, 55, 62. Insane. Thank you so much, Devjit and Gaurav. I'll see you in so many quizzes that we are doing. Somewhere we'll quiz again. And Shax, for being so kind to come and quiz with Are Intense, intense. The tribute intense, intense. <laughs> this, was, uh, this was actually quite, uh, quite tough. Yeah. And oh, our, oh, no, well played. Yeah, well played. Yeah. GG, yeah. GG. Well played, everyone. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.